Welcome to ICA's video channel, taking the message of Jesus Christ to the world. For more information, go to our website at icahk.org. You know, today I'm going to speak from John 14, 8 to 14, and um, I want to share with you one of the most important and key aspects of our faith, and this will change the way that you live and believe for God to show up in and through your life, and that is, that is our belief, our trust, and our walk with a supernatural God. You have a supernatural God. Turn to your neighbor and say, you have a supernatural God. Yeah, so as Stephen McDougall said, we're on a new sermon series on the supernatural, and we're going to have four different speakers in the next four weeks, um, and, we're, and we're going through um, this, and, we, and our hope for, for you is that, you know, by the end of this series, that you would not just have knowledge and understanding about a supernatural God, but that you would have an encounter with him. You know, um, how many of you know that the world desperately needs an encounter with God? That if you look around with the coronavirus, you see people who are full of fear, um, some people with paranoia, uh, with the escalating political unrest escalating last year. Uh, there's a lot of hopelessness. Um, it, it, it's not hard to see that the world desperately needs an encounter with God. And we want to equip you through the series that you would be able to uh, bring these God encounters to others and that you would see your lost friends be able to encounter the power of God because God is good that he wants to reveal his goodness through you, and he is a supernatural God. Amen? So let's be a church that expects the supernatural to happen often. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, God, that you are supernatural, God. We thank you that you are good and you're still moving, God. And in this time, Lord, we just put our faith in you. While the enemy wants to give us a message of fear, God, we come in and we listen to your message of faith, of hope. God, we stand in you. Would you speak through me and would you uh, speak to everyone your words, what you have to say today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So we're going to read from uh, John 14 in a second, but first I want to define what do we mean by the word supernatural. Um, In the dictionary, it defines it like this, an, an adjective, and it means attributed to some force beyond scientific understanding or the laws of nature. And so, you know, this is what the dictionary says. We know that God is a force beyond scientific understanding and the laws of nature, but not just that, actually he is our creator, that he created the natural. So God is beyond the natural. He created the laws of nature itself, and he is beyond time. He's beyond space. He's beyond all powers and all wisdoms and understanding of this, of this world. He's beyond all good. And so that is who God is. He's supernatural. It's not just that God is supernatural, but God does supernatural things. Um, if you want to see uh, how God is supernatural, just flip open your Bible. I was preparing for this message, and in my daily Uh, New Testament reading, I I read about how Jesus is doing miracles, and then I went to my daily Old Testament reading, and I read about Isaac, who's being picked a wife, and the servant is finding a wife for Isaac, and he prays to God, God, would the the woman that is, is supposed to be Isaac's wife, let her not just draw water from the well for me, but also for my camels. So it's supernatural guidance, even in picking a wife. The Bible is full of God doing supernatural things. In Exodus 20, verse 2, it's uh, Jesus, God says of himself, I am the Lord, your God, 
who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. This is who God is. Deuteronomy 26. So the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and with an outstretched arm and with great terror and with signs and wonders. Psalm 72. Blessed be the Lord God, the God of Israel, who alone works wonders. God is a God of wonders. He's a God of miracles. He's a God of the impossible. He is a supernatural God. In fact, our salvation born again experience, the fact that we are Christian is a supernatural experience. Our righteousness in him is supernatural. Our identity as sons and daughters of God and saints is supernatural. Um, The fruit of the spirit operating through our lives is supernatural. God's leadership in our lives is supernatural. When you have a supernatural God living inside of you, you become a supernatural person. So let's be a church that expects the supernatural to happen often. Amen? Amen. All right, if you're happy today, say amen. 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 It's pretty good. I love this. I love that you guys came out today. I am looking at a victorious church. We're not afraid. It's so evident that God is supernatural. The question is not, is God supernatural? The question is, if God is supernatural. What is his nature like? What is God like? And this is the question that Philip has in our our passage today. In John 14, verse 8, Philip said to him, said to Jesus, Lord, show us the Father, and it is enough for us. Let me give you some context. Jesus had been talking to his disciples, and he had just told them that he's going to leave them. We know that he's going to the cross, but the disciples just know that he's going to leave, and they become scared and afraid, um, discouraged, and Jesus is speaking to them through that, and one of the disciples asks him, "Uh, Jesus, where are you going? Show us the way, and Jesus makes this really famous statement. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me, and in this, Philip asked him, show us the Father, because he believes that if we can just have one glimpse of the Father, just one vision of the Father, if we could know who the Father is, it will be enough to calm our doubts and our fears. So he asked, show us the Father. In verse 9, Jesus said to him, Have I been with you so long, and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or else believe on account of the works themselves. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do, and greater works than these will he do, because I am going to the Father. Whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Amen. So my first point today is that a supernatural God is revealed in Jesus. I have a a daughter, Rama, and she's uh, past four months old now. um, And and, uh, people are saying that she looks like me. Um, I think that she has Esther's eyes and features and she has my skin tone and my hair, but it's going to get darker as babies grow, right? Um, And so some people say, you know, she looks like me. Some people say, oh, she looks like Esther. Some people say, like, she's a perfect mix of you both. Um, Jesus looked like the Father. That Rhema is an imperfect representation of who I am. Like, she, she, you know, as she grows up, she's going to continue to carry some of my features and hopefully some attributes that are good uh, from me. And, uh, and you know, y- you might be able to say, oh yeah, I see, I see Josh in you. But uh, Rhema is not a perfect you know, representation. She's also gonna carry her traits. She carries Esther's traits. Um, and, and with Jesus, 
Jesus not only looked like his father, but everything he did came from his father. Um, he is God, and whatever he saw God doing is what he was doing. And if you've seen him, you've seen the father. If you see Jesus, you need to look no further. You found the father. You found all that you need. Um, he's pr a perfect representation of who God is. So what was Jesus like? How did he reveal the Father? And if I could just put it all into one word, because there's so many things we could say, and it would be all good, but if I was to make it all into one word, I would say that Jesus revealed that God the Father is good. In Acts 10, 38, it says, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, and he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. So we see that through the life of Jesus, Jesus, everywhere that Jesus went, he was doing good. He wasn't doing bad. He wasn't doing average. He was doing good things. And he was showing who the Father was. He was healing those who were oppressed by the devil. The Bible has no record of, of Jesus um, not healing anybody who came to him uh, for, for healing. Every person who came to Jesus was healed. Um, it had no record of Jesus giving sickness to people. Um, and that's because the mission of Jesus, Jesus came to save, to heal, to deliver. Jesus showed us that God is for us and not against us. There was a, a time couple years ago when I was leading the youth ministry and uh, I was preaching a sermon. At the end of the sermon, I felt like the Lord said that he wanted to heal somebody uh, from, from, with toes, uh, uh, of something wrong with their toes. And so I, I thought, oh, that's, that's really strange. I, I, I don't want to give a word, so God wants to heal your toes. That's kind of awkward. But at the end of this, this, the sermon, so I just said, hey, we're just going to go into a short time of praying for each other for healing. And, uh, and by the way, if anyone has anything wrong with their toes, I believe God wants to heal you. At the end of that, you know, after the fellowship, some, some, a little girl came up to me. She was maybe 14, 15 years old. And, uh, and her toes, she said she had an ingrown toenail. And after prayer, the, the toe was not ingrown anymore. All the pain had left. God healed her toes. <laughs> God is good, right? God is so good. Healing reveals who God is. The miraculous intervention of God in our lives always reveals who God is. In Exodus 33, verse 13, Moses said, I want to know your ways so that I might know you. That it's not just enough that I see God's ways, that I see miracles happen. But each miracle is an invitation to an encounter. Each miracle shows me, reveals to me who God is, that God is good. And each miracle brings me into a deeper relationship with God. The girl with the toes that got healed, what does that tell you? What does that reveal about who God is? It shows you that God doesn't just care about the big things that happen across this world, the major things that affect nations. And God cares about the little things. He cares so much about the girl's ingrown toenails because it was painful to her. And God cares about the little things that you care about because he cares about you. Amen. So Jesus not only revealed who the Father was through his miracles, but through everything that he did, because he said that the Father is in me, and I am in the Father. Jesus represented the Father. He represented, he presented again who the Father was to the Israelites. When they had a different picture of the Father, Jesus showed that he was good. Through the, through the miracles, through the things that he spoke, he shared the story of the prodigal son, where you see a picture of a completely different father, a father who's full of grace, um, full of love and acceptance, and just runs after, pursues relationship with us. There's two questions, um, the first two questions in, in chapter 14 of John, the passage we were reading, the first two questions are, number one, Jesus, where are you going? 
And number two, show us the Father. What is God like? And, the, and this is when the disciples were full of fear and, 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 and pain, you know, sorrow because Jesus is leaving. When, when we come into places of sorrow, these are the two questions that burn in our spirits. It's the question, where are you going? God, where are you? In this time of difficulty, in this time of pain, God, where are you? And number two, the question is, um, is God really good? Who are you? Are you really good in this pain, in this tough trial that I'm experiencing? If we don't get these two questions settled, when we go into difficulty, it, it's going to be hard and it might push us over. But God wants to answer these two questions. And where are you, God? God is here with you right now in your trial. And God, are you really good? God is good. That's who he is to you. What about you? What about in, in this time where the coronavirus is, is coming out? Do we truly believe that God is good in, in a situation as the news keeps getting worse and worse? Do we believe that God is good? If we don't truly believe that God is good, we won't expect his supernatural to happen in our lives because we won't trust him for that which is outside of our control. So we will say, no, thank you, God. I don't need the supernatural. Let's keep it natural, God. We need to, we need to have a conviction that God is good. And when we do, we will be hungry to see God move more in our lives. Let's be a church that expects the supernatural to happen often. So Jesus revealed that God is good and supernatural ministry, ministry is for all believers. In, in verse 11, he says, Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or else believe me on account of the works themselves. So the purpose of the supernatural is so that we will believe. Actually, me and, and Stephen McDougall, we were talking about this the other week, and we came up with four purposes for the supernatural ministry. So number one, the supernatural ministry um, is to glorify God. Number two, the supernatural ministry is to destroy the works of the devil and to establish the kingdom of God. Number three, the supernatural is to... Um, reveal who God is, and number four, the supernatural um, is so that we will believe. Do we want to see this happen in our lives? Amen? We want to glorify God. We want to destroy the works of the devil. We want to reveal who God is, and we want others to believe in him. Amen? And I read on verse 12. It says, truly, truly, I say to you. Whenever the Bible says truly, truly um, in, in their original language, what it means is pay attention. Listen up. This is so important. This is, there's no doubt in this truth. This is the truth. And so Jesus says, truly, truly, I say to you. Whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do and greater works than these will he do because I am going to the Father. Jesus wasn't saying that the works that, that he's doing will only be done by the apostles, um, the disciples he's talking to. He, he says, whoever believes in me. That's anyone who believes. Jesus wasn't saying this to the extra spiritual or the, the people who are on, uh, on stage on Sunday or the one with the theological theological degrees, Jesus was saying this to whoever. It's available to whoever believes in him. My point is this, the, that the works of God, supernatural works happening through the life of a believer is a given. It's meant to be the norm. We should expect the supernatural to happen often. Sometimes we don't see the supernatural happen because we don't believe. Some, some Christians believe enough to go to heaven, but not enough to see heaven come to earth. Some Christians believe enough to be saved, but not enough to see the supernatural happen. We can call this 
unbelieving believers. The supernatural intervention of God in our lives is what we were created to experience. This was not meant to be a mountaintop experience where it's, I go to this camp, I go to this conference, and I see the supernatural happen. It happened once in my life. and No, it's meant to happen every day in the believer. It's meant to be the DNA of the believer is to see this happen. We are hungry for a move of God in our lives. We desire for God's intervention. Have you ever read the Bible and just saw the miracles God did and asked yourself, why don't I see this happen more in my community or my life? Have you ever read the book of Acts, for example, and and you read about how Paul was was doing miracles and Peter was doing miracles and the believers and and, and you got so fired up and stirred up as, I want to see this happen. It's no wonder some Christians are bored. Are you bored in your faith? If you are, that's good. It shows that you are frustrated with the level of experience that you already have with God. Boredom is an invitation from God for you to go deeper in your walk with him. God has so much more in store for you. If you're bored, it's likely that you're experiencing religion and not the kingdom of God. In 2 Timothy 3 verse 5, it says, having a form of godliness, but denying its power. This is what religion is, um, that, that we, we check off our, our religious duties and our, our religious check boxes, and we feel godly. It's like, yes, I've read my Bible today, but It's denying the power, ignoring the power. I know that I've done this in my life. But God wants to bring us from boredom into a deeper encounter with him. He wants to bring us from experiencing religion to experiencing the kingdom of God. Amen? The the other day, a couple weeks ago, uh, Rhema laughed for the first time. And uh, and it was amazing. You know, uh, before that, she could just go, Aha! And I love it. I love time with Rayma. And a couple weeks ago, she was, I had her on my lap, and, and, uh, and we were just having face-to-face time. I love face-to-face time with Rayma. And, uh, and, and, you know, she would go, ha! And I love how joyful she is. And we had on the background a uh, TV, a sermon playing, and, and, and uh, the, 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 the guy in the sermon went, the power and the presence of Yahweh! And, <clears throat> and I'm just like, I, I just started to repeat it. You know, sometimes you don't really say uh, things that make sense when you have a baby in front of you, and so and so I just went, I just went, the power and the presence of Yahweh, and then Rayma just went, uh-huh. <laughs> and she started laughing, and I was like, what? Esther, she started laughing, and my wife Esther started like running over to, to me. She's like, do it again, and I was like, the power and the presence of Yahweh. <laughs> I was like, oh, it's amazing. And we spent the next two days trying to get her to laugh. Uh, it was so much fun. But maybe sometimes the reason why Christians are not having fun is because we're not experiencing the power in the presence of Yahweh. That there is laughter, there is joy, um, there, is, there is so much fun when you can see God move, when you can experience the power in the presence of Jesus. God wants to bring his power through your life, and he wants to work in your life. He doesn't want you to have boredom. He wants you to have a kingdom experience where you go deeper. Amen? So let's expect the supernatural to happen often. Sometimes we, we don't believe for God to do the supernatural because we're offended. And maybe, maybe it's like, you had a time in the past where you, you asked God for, for God to move in a miracle in your life or in the life of someone you love, and, and you didn't see it happen. And so you got discouraged, you got offended at God, and it's like, well, I'm not going to believe anymore for God to do supernatural things. It just doesn't work. I love the song, Waymaker. And in, in the bridge it says, Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. 
we need to feed ourselves not with what God is not doing, but with what God is doing. Because even when we don't see God moving the way that we wanted him to, the way we expected him to, in the situation we wanted him to, doesn't mean that he does not have good for your life and doesn't mean that he's not moving. And so if you don't see God moving, start to feed yourself with what God is doing. Search and find it out. What is God doing in the life of your friends? Bring up the te- testimonies in your life and what has God done in your life. Go to church ministries where you see God moving. Um, I'm so proud of our, our prayer uh, team that, that prays at the altar every Sunday, that every service, every week, we see God healing people. And it's amazing. And, and I love that we can be a ch- part of a church that sees this happen. Um, you know, with, we have a healing rooms ministry every Saturday morning. If you do not know that we have a healing rooms ministry and you are sick, uh, you should check it out. They see, they see so many people get healed. Um, they, they've seen cancer get healed. They, they saw a girl with MS for four years who couldn't play the piano, couldn't write, Skyped in over from, I think it's Australia, and, uh, and, and she got healed on, on, through the internet, well, through the power of the Holy Spirit, obviously, and, <laughs> and, uh, and, and now she can play the piano. Not only that, she has four piano students, and she's teaching them how to play the piano. Praise God. I remember that, that Lindy, Pastor Lindy had said that there were, there were, you know, for a few months, there were people who were being healed of deaf ears um, until there was, maybe there was one person who, who didn't um, get healed. And, and, but she said, for those few months, it was 100% healing. And so I talked to her the other day and I said, oh, you know, um, how many months was that for? And she's like, oh, actually, it's still going on. It's been two years so far. Almost every single person who's come to the healing rooms with deaf ears has been healed of deaf ears. And I'm like, that's amazing. Is it like 10 people? And she's like, no, it's probably closer to 20 people um, just walking in. Isn't that amazing that God is a supernatural God? He's healing. And he doesn't just want to do it through, yeah, amen. He doesn't just want to do it through the healing rooms the apostles, the special people, he wants to do it for all who believe. That all of us, God can do mighty works through your life. There's so many more stories, but um, I'm just going to leave it at that. And to recap, we want to be a church that expects the supernatural to happen often because the supernatural ministry of God glorifies God It destroys the work of the devil, establishes God's kingdom. It reveals who God is so that we may believe. Amen. Let us all stand. As I was praying for this message, I I just really was felt like God was doing something powerful. Um, I felt like God wanted to bring revival to our church, that he wanted to bring a move of God, and something is stirring up today, I believe, as we are sharing this, that, that God's doing something amazing. And um, I want to pray for us with what's going on in the city with the coronavirus, that we would not be a people of fear, but that we would be a people of faith. And um, I feel like I had breakthrough for it this week when God put a verse on my spirit from Matthew 10, 28. And it says, do not be in fear of those who can kill only the body, but not your soul. Fear only God who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Let's not be a people who fear virus. Let's be a people who fear the Lord. Jesus said, Wherever you go, proclaim the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers. I believe this virus is the modern day leprosy. For the Old Testament, when there was someone with leprosy, they would put them out of the city, out of the walls, so no one else would get contaminated. And you don't touch lepers, they are unclean. But Jesus said, go and heal the lepers. What is he saying? In the Old Testament, when you touch a leper, you get leprosy. But in the New Testament, when you touch a leper, 
they get the kingdom, they get healed. Amen. And I want to pray that there will be no infection that can touch us, but that the Holy Spirit's kingdom will invade this affection and will destroy the works of the devil. Let's all raise our hands to heaven and let's pray. Father, we just speak your goodness. We speak your presence over every person here. We speak protection, that we are a supernatural people as sons and daughters of a supernatural God. We have the supernatural God living inside of us and we plead your protection, the power of the Holy Spirit over every person here, over our family, over our city, over all the nations of the world. Let what the enemy meant for evil, let you be turn that into good, God, in your plans. I pray for a victorious church to rise up over the face of the planet in every city, God, and in Wuhan, God, that the, the church of Christ would rise up there and that they would see major signs and wonders and miracles and that it would be stirring faith in the lives of the believers and non-believers that they would come to Christ and there would be a revival there. Lord, we just pray for every person here that when we touch the germs, the germs don't infect us, but the kingdom of heaven comes through power in our lives. And I pray that 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 all fear would go right now in Jesus. We pray for wisdom from you, God, but not for fear. Destroy fear in Jesus' name. And we love you. We bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people say, amen.